Today we're working on a microwave oven transformer and we're looking at it with a really nice slow motion camera. It's going to be awesome. So a few days ago I met up with my good friend and previous mentor Tony Butterfield. He's a professor at the University of Utah and just a great guy. He recently got a slow motion camera and he invited me down to his lab to help set it up and shoot a couple of cool experiments. Now, big fans of the show might remember that we've done this before. <laughs> so in preparation for this episode, I rewatched it and it was such a bad episode. It was really bad. So we're gonna redo it again. If you haven't seen it, don't worry. Just don't even worry. Today, you're gonna learn all you need to know about microwave oven transformers. Let's actually take a look at an arc in slow motion. I wanted to tell you about what I learned working with slow motion cameras for the first time. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about how a transformer works, because it's pretty cool. To talk about transformers, we're going to have to talk first about electromagnets. Now, you may have seen this before, where you take a nail and you wrap a coil of wire around it and plug that coil into a battery, and that'll turn the nail into a magnet that you can pick paper clips up with. It's kind of cool. It's a nice little science experiment. So what we've done there is we've turned electricity into a magnetic field. But what's cool is that it works both ways. If you were to take a coil of wire and pass a magnet through it very quickly, that will actually produce electricity going out of that coil. And this is how almost all of our generators work today. We move magnets through coils very quickly. Now imagine you were to take two electromagnets right next to each other. If one was to suddenly produce a magnetic field, well that's almost the same thing as passing a magnet by this other coil. So the first coil, the primary coil, is going to produce that magnetic field which is going to collapse onto the secondary coil. Now the way that we can transform the electricity into different voltages is by having a different number of turns on our coil. In this case, we're going from a low number of turns on our primary to a high number of turns on our secondary, and that's going to allow you to step up the voltage. It's gonna give you a high voltage transformer. So slow motion cameras need a lot of light to operate. So much light, in fact, that we had to get, when we were setting this up, we had our own giant light beacon that we had to point at the objects. The slow motion camera has to have a very, needs to receive a lot of light on the sensor because it's only exposing the sensor to the scene for a very brief amount of time because it's taking so many frames in a given second. So it needs a lot of light. This effect is so pronounced that when I first turned on the slow motion camera for the first time, I thought I had left the lens cap on because it was just a black frame. And it wasn't until I pointed the slow motion camera directly at the lights and waved my hand in front of it that we could actually tell that it was receiving footage. It was just really, really dark. So if you look carefully at this shot, you'll notice that the arc is almost entirely white with some orange around the edge. But look into the back corner there. You can actually see on this piece of black acrylic that we set in the background, you can see its reflection is reflecting all kinds of cool, crazy colors. Now, why is that? <laughs> well, what we thought it was, was the uh, arc was actually just blowing out the sensor. It was too bright for it to detect the different colors. Um, and the reflection in the acrylic was actually dampening the light enough that the light sensors could pick up and distinguish the difference between different colors and show up on the screen. So for this next shot, for this really beautiful shot, we turned down the aperture so that you can barely see the microwave oven transformer and really see the arc in sharp detail. So these colors are actually coming from the molecules in the air itself. And the power of the arc is actually exciting these molecules and fluorescing them. And this is the same process that makes neon signs work. And I think it's fascinating to see this process at work 
not in a glass bottle or in a noble gas, but instead in the atmosphere around us. And this is why we do Jam Labs. The goal is to see the scientific phenomena that we're familiar with in new and interesting ways. I think that's, I think that's something special. So today on Jam Labs, we looked at a microwave oven transformer and I had a chance to analyze it in slow motion. And big thanks to Tony Butterfield from the University of Utah. Without your help, this episode couldn't have been possible. And I really appreciate it, Tony. Thank you.